Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about functions, but this time we're going to talk about a very specific function that we're all familiar with the main function our entry point into a D program that we write. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit to understand a little bit about how the main function works. So if I just go ahead over here and just draw out main here, this is our entry point into the program. And we'll talk about the return type here in a moment, but typically this has been void and we don't return any value. But again, this is our entry into our program because every program that we write must actually have a beginning point. Now there are some initialization steps that do actually take place before main runs. So that might be of interest for you to dive into a little bit further. If you want to YouTube around that, uh, I can recommend some talks like the bits before the bytes or what happens before main if you Google those terms. But let's go ahead and just try to understand again how we set up the main function and again how we can set up different program arguments. That is our parameters here in our main function. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just set up a simple program here and we have our void main program here. So if I go ahead and just run this with our DMD and main again, no output, nothing really interesting here. Now we are actually allowed to set up int here, for instance, if we want to return some value here. And typically we would return something like zero or maybe 42 to have some meaningful value here. So we can go ahead and run this. And again, you'll see that this compiles and runs just fine. Now, sometimes folks do prefer to have int here for the return type from main and return this status code with some meaning here, because actually what you can do in your terminal is you could do echo the dollar sign and question mark, and you'll see that this returns 42. So the status of the last program that executed. And that might be informative, for instance, if you were to run this program or want to pipe this out to echo some other feedback here for some reason here. And that's the reason why sometimes these status codes matter. Now, in particular, if you want to use some of the classic status codes like exit failure or exit success, good news, those are available to you. So I'll go ahead and just take you to one of the D programming language pages. If you're familiar with these coming from another language, exit failure or exit success, those would be the ones to sort of prefer here. So let's go ahead and import in this library here. And I'll go ahead and just do import the core standard C standard library here. And now we can go ahead and use exit success. For instance, I'll go ahead and rerun this using RDMD. And if I echo typically zero means success by this convention here. So you can go ahead and see that we have that available. So that's just something that we can do for most of my programs. And most of what you're going to see in this series, I like using void main. And then if I need to return some sort of status code or logging, uh, I'll make that decision later. But just so you know that that's available, that is something that we can do. So let me go ahead and give us a clean slate here and go ahead and talk about these arguments here. Because you'll notice again that by default, we don't have to pass any arguments. But sometimes when we run a program, for instance, even RDMD, we're passing in an argument. In this case, the file names here, or maybe multiple file names. So let's try to understand exactly how that works. So in the D language, what we do here is we're going to pass in an array of strings here. So string, and by convention, usually args short for arguments. You can name this whatever you want, but you'll see it most frequently as args here. So let's go ahead and combine some of the things that we've learned here and just print out our arguments here. So for each of the arguments, let's just go ahead and write out each line here, S here, and let's go ahead and see what happens here. Now for this example, I'm going to go ahead and just compile this program here. And let's just go ahead and output this as a program here. And this file is main. And then I'll go ahead and run program here. And you'll notice that it just echoes out prog here. So the first argument is actually always, in this case, the executable name. Well, that sort of makes sense. It's the first sort of non-space separated argument that we provide here. So let's go ahead and try to run this with one, two, and three. Then if I hit enter, well, we'll see program one, two, and three. So pretty neat here. And if I put these in a string here, well, these are considered together, these arguments. So I'll get program and one, two, and three here. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense with how these arguments are working. Now, if we want to sort of count the arguments, we can use the properties here, args.length here to figure out the size of how many arguments we have. 
So for instance, let's go ahead and just write line the number of args, comma, args dot length. And let's go ahead and recompile this program and rerun it. And we'll go ahead and see that we have two arguments here. The first one, again, the executable, and then whatever the next space separated argument is. And if we put things in quotations, that just counts as one argument, which is something important to keep in mind. All right, so let me go ahead and just briefly run this same program with um, our DMD here, which you notice that I skipped here, and we'll provide the same arguments here, one, two, and three. And if I hit enter here, you'll notice again that we have two arguments here and we see the one two and three so that works fine but you'll notice we are getting a little bit of extra here because well recall that whenever we use rdmd we're essentially running this file like a script so there's a little bit extra pre-processing going on so don't be scared by this output here just understand that we're still getting arguments in the right spot meaning our actual argument that we passed in here one two and three we can read as the first index into this args array here all right so what else can we do with our arguments? Well, I want to go ahead and introduce another library here, and it's called git opt. And this might be familiar with some folks, again, if you've done some C programming or even in C++ use this library. And this allows us to do things, for instance, like when we run our DMD compiler and type in dash dash help and get a list of options. So if we want to create those different options for us, we can use this library. So I'm basically just going to take the little example that they have here uh, provided in a documentation just to show you how this works here. So I'll go ahead and leave this up here and let's go ahead and import. Uh, and actually, since I'm doing this within the main function, I like to keep things usually within the scope here. So let's import in git opt and let's go ahead and just follow a little bit of this example here. So what I'll go ahead and do, let's just do one string my argument. And sometimes we call these uh, flags. So let's just go ahead and call it my argument flag. And this will be de default initialized to an empty string here. And then the next part I'm going to work on is here with our help information. I'll use auto help information equals get opt our args. That's what we're passing into our program that we just learned about. And then how to interpret them. So let's go ahead and just create something called, let's call it a uh, flag here. And then we want to put the value in, and we have to talk about this ampersand a little bit, but this will be familiar to folks in coming from C or C++, but that's essentially going to store the value in my argument flags here, my argument flags. And then let's go ahead and just close this off here. All right, uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, let's print out this information just so we have it here. And we can go ahead and remove uh, this little bit here. We know what our arguments are. And then let's go ahead and in this case, let's go ahead and print out my argument. And I'm just going to have one here. So let's just call it flag. And let's just go ahead and write line here. So my argument flag. And just for the sake of having some nice uh, output here, as we're learning, it's always useful to label what we're uh, designing here. All right, so how to actually run this? Well, this time with the git op library, we're treating this as a flag here. So again, we've seen these occasionally, especially when we're doing, um, and let me go ahead and show a direct example here. With DMD, this is an example of a flag, this dash and then OF here, okay? So let's go ahead and recreate that here. And when we run this program, which I'll do rdmd main dash flag, and I'll just call this is some input okay into our program and i'll put it in quotation marks here go ahead and hit enter and whoops looks like i got an error here <laughs> so let's see what happened here and looks like i just made a little mistake actually so we don't want to panic here let's actually see if we can uh decode the error here so instead of a uh, dash flag let's see what it's going to say here if we go to our actual exception it says unrecognized option dash flag well it looks like i set it up here it's just a matter of knowing how to actually use this library here where we actually want to do uh, just dash dash flag here. <laughs> just to make sure that we get that correct here. OK, so now if I hit enter here, uh, oops, let me run that again here without the, the backslash here. Get rid of that. Then we can see my argument flag is this is some input. So whatever is within this string here 
Or if I get rid of, again, the string here, it would take in, you know, some input without a space. Uh, I'll just go ahead and write that there. So again, you could go ahead and see that's our flag here. So what's nice about using this library is it doesn't matter if I create multiple flags here and I can just add to this list here. So let's go ahead and just add one more here. And I'll just kind of label these just to again show you how this is working here. Uh, let's go ahead and call this here. And I'll just call this flag one. And I'll call flag two here. And my argument flag two. All right. And then let's go ahead and print these out. Just so that, again that you can see that we can, um, the actual library will handle these in different order. Because I know this is a common question that folks uh, will have here. Uh, so let's go ahead and just specify uh, flag two here, and I'll have flag one, the you know second, I'll just call this a uh, second flag here, something like that. And if I run this, again we can see that the actual flag one is printed out properly as our first flag, and our second one or whatever we name it. So again. If the order of the arguments matters um, that you're specifying, then you could just use args and, and give that as input to a user. Or if they don't matter and you want to handle more complex situations, I'd recommend using this git op library here. Now, what's interesting to observe here, just for a moment here, is just thinking about this git op function here and the flexibility that the deep programming language allows us. You'll notice in the example, they have multiple flags here and we only have a few here. So that will be something that we do want to think about later on in this series. How are we able to set up objects to handle, well, really any type of number of arguments here? In fact, something that you can do that's uh, quite useful, again, just to continue off with this option, is let's go ahead and just print out some information here, again, following this example, about our arguments. And I'll say if help uh, information dot help wanted, and uh, that means that we pass in by default the dash dash help flag. Then we can just, uh, well, I'm just going to, again, uh, either print out the help information dot options here. Now let's just do that through right line here. Actually, I'll use the actual uh, printer here because it gives us a nice format. So again, I'm just going to paste that in here. And then just so you can see it a little bit nicely on one line here, let's go ahead and run that again. So I didn't add in the help flag. I'll add in this time dash dash help or dash H. And you'll see that we can actually see the different flags that are available. So if your users are using your applications, this is a nice thing to build in. Now, if you want some actual help information here, what you do here is you come into your arguments and you say, uh, you know, some info about flag one. And again, you do the same thing here. You know, some info about uh, flag two. And just go ahead and pay attention when I write this, that this information is going to populate here. Okay, so now if I actually run this with the dash dash help flag, you can see this information is printed out here. All right, so just to recap what we've covered here, we've gone into something maybe a little bit more advanced for where we're at this series, but I think it's going to be interesting for you to play around with. We've talked about the main function. We've talked about the program arguments that it takes with args, and that's going to be fine for 90% of you as you're starting out. But for those of you who want to write some command line programs that take in specific flags or arguments, you can handle that with the git op library, which is quite nice to have in your back pocket when writing D applications. So there you have it, folks. We've learned about a little bit the main function and just how it acts like a regular normal function and can take in a variety of parameters that are handled through that dynamic string array. And then we've even learned about some advanced program argument parsing that we can do. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll subscribe. If you're enjoying this series, give it a like or comment below if you have any questions. And as always, thank you for your time and attention, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon.